Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The FIBA 23 market continues to rise as the Rule Breakers promo is just a little bit lackluster content-wise. And I'm sure some of you are asking, Nate, how can I make coins right now when the market continues to rise and as the market is still going up? on FIFA 23. What I wanna do in today's video is take you through two trading methods that work so well for me, and I would argue these trading methods are the ones that make me the most coins year round in FIFA, trend trading and fluctuation trading. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking, Nate, can you make a video about how to trade with icons, how to trade with foot heroes? We're gonna cover that in today's video as well as it does fall underneath the fluctuation trading method. And again, these trading methods are not science. You learn prices, you look at player prices, and you kind of know how the game just works on a week to week basis. And you can make coins every single week and every single day on this game with these methods. So I'm excited to share those with you today. Also, today's a Sunday content day, which usually brings the mini release, which we would hope to see with Rule Breakers today, but we don't have any leaks for that. Kind of interesting, but we do have a leaked SBC player that I think is coming out today. We'll talk about that in this video. So if you're excited to learn how to make coins, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I mean, it's really easy to start talking about the first trading method today because I did it yesterday on FIFA 23. I bought on the low price point Friday night late into early Saturday morning, depending on where your time frame is. We'll talk about that in a second. And I sold into the Saturday market rise that we most often see as people wake up on Saturday and there's a lot of foot champs demand. I bought Benzema's last night at 60,000 coins. I bought Tamori's at like 69,000 coins on bid. These were some of the cards that I flipped from Friday night late into Saturday morning midday with the number one method I'm gonna speak about today. That is the trend trading method. Basically, all you need to know is some general market trends, how the market usually moves each week. You can buy cards when they're low, sell them when they go higher. The first trend, as I just mentioned, is Friday night into Saturday morning. And I'm talking in kind of like the, the EU UK time zone, right? This graph, I believe, shows the UK time zone. So last night at 1 a.m., UK time, Friday night, 1 a.m., or I guess Saturday morning, 1 a.m., technically, Benzema hit his low point at about 60,000 coins. As you can see, on Friday, he was dropping with content, went down, went down, kind of stayed at around 68K, and then as the nighttime came, uh, continued, he dropped lower and, and kind of hit a low point on Saturday morning, early hours, at 61,000 coins, and then shot back up as people wake up on Saturday, go out, play foot champions, and there's demand for cards. People go out and buy cards to their teams to go play those games, and that's a very common trend that you see on this game. It happened with a ton of players. It happened with Rule Breakers cards, right? It happens with gold cards. It happens with Team of the Weeks. Your most hyped and your most popular cards are what rise every single week on this trend trading method, right? Fakir down to 330, 340, bounce right back up to 374. Usually on the Friday night to Saturday uh, time frame, the rises are... They're pretty fast and they're pretty quick. And, it, you know, I was looking at Team of the Week cards yesterday as well. Team of the Week 4 cards like Frimpong was really low on Friday night. We're talking 16K. And he went all the way up to 20,000 coins. Of course, he did drop all the way back down, then went up again. But this is the kind of graph you want to look for. A lot of movement. When a card has a lot of movement like this, that means it is, number one, hyped. People want to use it. There's a lot of demand there. And number two, it probably means that it's a little bit rare, which may not be the case with Frimpong. It just may be more of the demand. And still, he's a pretty new card because obviously an 83-rated inform is getting packed a lot on the weekend with Foot Champs rewards and those Team of the Week packs being given out. So you're, not, you're like, Nate, what cards again do I want to trade with? You Again, you want to focus on those cards that are the higher-rated ones, the most meta, the most popular. Kevin De Bruyne was 125k he went all the way up to 140 look at that a really nice trend trading market rise from friday night into saturday when's the next one nate when am i going to be able to buy cards again on a trend and potentially make some coins here's what i'll tell you look at them tonight watch cards tonight late sunday night a very common trend is cards get low sunday night and then they rise into Monday because people get their foot champs rewards paid out. A lot of people don't finish their weekend league uh, and like get all their games done. And a lot of people actually 
just get their rewards when the actual weekend league competition closes, closes, which is on Monday mornings, early morning UK time. So what you often see is people then get their rewards, they go out on the market, and they buy cards for the team. Now I'm sitting here on this KDB because Footbin has emitted a bit of an undercut on Snipe. I'm trying to snag one at like 123 right now because that's what Footbin shows, right? This is just sniping, not really a trading method. But watch the market tonight on Sunday. Watch your team of the week cards. Watch your meta golds. You want to find ones that have pretty big drop-offs, right? Um, again, KDB will look at his graph as we're still here. On Friday, he went from 148K, dropped with the promo supply of the new promo and packs in the store to 120, bounced up to 132, and then you can see going all the way down to 125 was like, hmm, if I'm thinking about it, this Kevin De Bruyne is a high rated, 91 rated card. There's Cancelo in Team of the Week that people are packing in their Reds, that people are packing in their Team of the Week packs and general packs, right? And Manchester City, everybody wants to play with Erling Holland right now, so those links are great. This is a, a really, really good card to fluctuation trade with the trends because he has a lot of price movements, right? So that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for those meta cards that are popular and rare, that get low on Friday nights that you can sell on Saturday mornings. Same thing again for Sunday night, heading into Monday morning. That's trading method number one, trend trading. Now, let's talk about fluctuation trading because we okay we know the trends that happen every single week and another trend i guess i could throw in really quickly is usually you see a few cards rising up a little bit on thursday after division rivals rewards not all the time though and it's only with a few specific cards like each and every week the big the biggest and best trends are definitely friday night into saturday and also sunday night into monday of course unless ea drops some crazy content out there that would impact that, those are the normal trends. Now, fluctuation trading, you also like to use a lot of footprint graphs. You also like to use a lot of these cards that are rare and that are meta. And this is where the icons, ooh, look at that, 122. See, somebody was on that. Oh, good snipe on there on KDB. This is where you use a lot of the icons and where you use a lot of the heroes, right? I'm gonna use an example of an, a hero card that I know the price of right now. Jan Pierre Papin, right? Brand new hero in FIBA 23. He right now is around 130-ish thousand coins, it looks like, 135. Okay, Papain is usually between 130 and 140,000 coins. If I take a look at his graph, we're going to go over to Footbin. This is where you can do a lot of research, and knowing the prices of the cards and their normal fluctuations is huge. Because if you know the price of the card, right, of course they change from day to day, but if you see a more rare card like this Papain card, his prices are decently consistent because he's pretty rare. Um, you see down to 127,000 coins on Saturday yesterday, and he peaked after content at 141K. On Friday, his peak was 132K, went down to 119, and then exploded to 140 after that. So what I'm looking for in this Papan is I know that each and every day, at least once, he's going to go up to 140,000 coins. Again, bar EA dropping some crazy content or something that would make their whole market drop, you know, you know that you're going to be able to sell them at 140,000 coins or right around there, probably today on Sunday as well. So what I'd be looking for is a time where Papan gets down below 130K because then I know that if I sell at 140,000 coins, which he hits every single day, or you get a, a nice lazy bid like this guy got, 147K on a lazy, that's nuts. You know, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, okay, I know the sell price in this card and what I can sell them for. Now I just have to find a buy price low enough to make some profit. One of my other favorite cards to do this with is Mohamed Salah, his inform. Very rare from an early on team of the week. This trading method works best with the very rare team of the week cards. Now, Salah's in for him. This is a very good example because his price has actually gone up a lot in the past two days with the market rising. He used to be kind of peaking and his peak price on a fluctuation used to be about 470K. He would go between like 430 and 470 almost every day like clockwork. But as you can see, with the big Friday coin injection, his price has gone from 450, 460, all the way up to like 500,000 coins. And yesterday, he went down to about 465 and then spiked and wow, had some crazy sales above 500,000 coins. So before my buy price on Salah was like 425, 430K because I knew I could sell it for 70. Now looking at his footprint graph, it looks like it's changed. If I see the Salah at about 460, 
I'm looking to sell over 500,000 coins because if I look at the market right now, there's only two cards to 515K. You have to use some patience, right? And you have to know that these cards are pretty rare um, and, and that they're going to fluctuate in price. And, you know, the deals are not always going to be there for the cards that you maybe know. If you know three or four cards, you know, your, your deals might not always be there, but you can set some footbin notifications if you have footbin premium or just keep an eye on their prices every once in a while. What I like to do, one of my favorite things to do is add cards to my transfer targets and then just go through and then click on them, right? Like I'll have a salon on my transfer targets. I'll, I'll hop onto my companion app and just, you know, hit compare price and scroll through the cards and be like, okay, right now Salah, he's up a little bit or right now Salah is down a little bit. So that's kind of the general idea with the fluctuation trading. It works best on the more rare cards, the heroes, the icons, uh, specifically one icon that I have been kind of watching right now is Hugo Sanchez. Um, his icon card usually sells around. Yeah, he's a little bit low, uh, lower because the whole market's dropped off a bit and icons this year are just not as hyped in general. Usually what I'm looking for on a card like this is buying around 300 and like 20 K knowing that I can probably get a sale for around 370,000 coins, especially with a little bit of hype right now with the Hector Herrera being out, some Mexican links for this Hugo Sanchez. You can see his price yesterday on Saturday went between, he didn't fluctuate that much. Also ignore this, sometimes icons, since they're so rare, have these stupid uh, high spikes, uh, but those are not always true. Like I really doubt he sold at 495K. Now I'll say this, you can use this really cool feature on Footbin called the market sales history, go through on these cards and look and see, okay, you can see here that uh, he sold for 373 about four hours ago, 375, 380. That was like a peak. Wow, 423. He did have some really high sales in there, but I doubt he had a 495. But then you can see that earlier in the day, he was 338, right? 325 on a snipe. Um, and then again, he was like 370, 350, 360, 340. So you can see, even if you look through these sale listings, the fluctuation on a card like this, and you know, okay, and I know if I get this Hugo Sanchez for like 320, 330,000 coins, I'm going to be able to make money on that card. So, you know, I've, I've been flipping, uh, the LAM mid card a decent amount. His price has gone down a lot. So I look for low 500s on him. The Butragueno baby card is another one that I just learned the price of. Like 580, 570 is where he normally sells at. Right now he's 570. So if I can get this guy at like 520, you know, I'm leaving myself room for profit in there, but it's not like I'm trying to slap this guy for 400K, which would be completely unrealistic. I'm just looking for those small to medium sized flips during a 24 hour period. That is fluctuation trading. So again, icons, heroes, out of packs cards in general. I know that heroes and icons are in packs, but they're pretty rare. Even though we had the whole hero compensation issue, uh, it, the heroes that I look at, like that Vapan card, you can absolutely still trade with them. Uh, you have to be careful with the, the heroes that are a bit more expensive because you need a bigger price swing on them since there's more tax involved for you to make profit. Uh, but you can absolutely start to learn some of these hero prices. This is what I would do. Literally just go to Flipin or whether it's heroes, whether it's out of pack specials, just go to flip in, click on these cards and maybe pick like two or three of them, add them to your transfer targets, start learning their price. And then you can watch their fluctuations during a day, pick them out at a good price and sell them. Of course, when they go back up, right? Smaller wreck is 272. I want this guy at like 255 because I know that I can sell him above 280. He was 287 once, twice, 289 earlier in the day yesterday, right? That's a that's a price I know in my head. Without EA dropping some sort of crazy content today on Sunday, if I were to see a smaller wreck in the 250 range, maybe it was a snipe, maybe it was a bid, whatever method you need. Oh, look at that, open bid right there for smaller wreck, right? Especially late night, ooh, a, a cheeky 242 start price. That's right up my alley for a card of, of that nature being more rare. Maybe less people are looking at that card on bid. Great opportunity to make coins with the trend trading and the fluctuation trading method. So hopefully that helps. I know we spent a lot of time talking about that, but I feel like it's very helpful and it deserves all the time that it, it needs and it should because it is probably, those two methods are how I make so many coins in FIFA every single year because you can use those methods every single day. That's the best part. So let's talk about Sunday content today though and talk about the market in general, what happened yesterday on Saturday for just a little bit. Now, the only leak that we have for today, like I mentioned, is, is this one right here. It's an SBC leak. Now, why am I thinking that this is today? Well, 
On the weekends, EA hardly miss a day of a player SBC, right? Think about during ones to watch. We had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, player SBCs, road to the knockouts, same thing. I think that this SBC will be today on Sunday. Foot Sheriff leaked it yesterday. This could be another pretty solid SBC. I mean, I'm looking at this card right now like, oh my goodness, that's almost a Hullet Gang Alex Tellez if they give him the right boost. And this fits perfectly into my team, so I'm a little bit extra hype for that. But is that boost on Alex Tellez a little bit like too much, EA Sports? I'm guessing uh, EA Sports. <laughs> Look at me saying EA Sports when Foot Sheriff is leaking this, yep. But uh, I'm guessing they're kind of making him a Rule Breakers boost. 80 shooting seems to be a lot. I don't exactly know what they're doing with this boost in this card. But anyways, um, we'll have to see if Alex Tellez gets a big boost like that because that could be a really nice SBC card if it looks anything like this. Of course, depending on the price, but a Brazilian defender in La Liga. I would say that La Liga with the special cards right now and some of the overpowered players in this game is a very, very hyped league, one of the most hyped leagues. So this would be a big time SBC for today. Again, it all comes down to price. I think people yesterday, if we talk about this for a second, the Alaba SBC is cool, right? It's cool to get the player pick option for the Alaba. I think there's one clear cut favorite that most people like. I think it's the one that has the 87 defense and the 87 physical. If you take a look at the two different versions, both can be lengthy, but this one can be lengthy with an anchor so you can boost the physical defense and pace attributes. 1900 upvotes on this David Alaba card, 300,000 coins to complete. Here's the interesting thing if you go to the SBC, 75% downvote. So he's very disliked in the SBC section, but he's got a lot of upvotes here. I don't understand. I'm personally kind of interested in this card. I really am. Just because it's more of an like, usually you think of David Alba as more of an agile um, center back. Uh, they could play other positions. I wish he had different position changes. I think so many people wish that he had different positions like CDM or left back or whatever it may be. This is still a really great card. And in my opinion, if you want to get it done crafting with upgrade packs, it should come out tomorrow on Monday. I think it's a great option. I'm tempted to do this depending on the price of Alex Telles because I'm doing first. But... I'm interested in this card. Before I'm gonna sit here and say this card is absolutely ridiculously overpriced, I think the stats on it are good enough to warrant this price tag. You know, think about this and, and maybe tell me if I'm wrong here or or not. This David Alaba card might be the second best card we have in this freaking promo, man. I mean, behind Cristiano Ronaldo, who's finally on the market. By the way, if you made coins on him yesterday, GG's, um, he had some really big fluctuations. We'll talk about that in a second. But Behind Cristiano Ronaldo at 1.7 million coins, David Alaba is like the best promo cards in, in my opinion. I guess Fakir is pretty good, you know. I know that Zaha is cool, Edin Dzeko is cool, but I don't think that these guys, I, I don't think they're on the level that like Alaba is. I think Alaba is better than like all of them. So interesting to think that if Alaba was on the market, would he be more than 300,000 coins? And honestly, looking at this, he might be right around there, maybe like 250 to 300K. So that SBC, although it seems expensive, might not actually be that bad of value. I'll hop off the high horse. That's my two cents about the David Alba SBC. But also today's content on Sunday, does EA have something interesting up their sleeve? That's the question I'm trying to ask myself because like we've seen added to the code, a base icon pack, a base a icon 86 overall pack, a hero pack, right? We have stuff added to the code that could very easily drop and absolutely destroy this nice rising market that we have had. I don't know if that's what EA wants to do with the market, but the content for Rule Breakers has been a bit lackluster. Are they going to continue that today on Sunday or are they going to spice it up? and make something interesting happen. Just wait for 6 p.m. We also could have our first Icon Player SBC of the year as well. A couple of them have been leaked. I think it's Vidic and Casillas. We have not seen them dropped yet, but I do believe that those could be uh, dropped today. Slight chance that one or two of those could be dropped today because Sundays have been Icon Player SBC days in the past. So that's kind of the situation on the market today and on the game. Again, Mini release, we're not sure. We had the Ribery leak, we had the Chicharito leak, and now we are being told those guys are in team two. But, you know, could they actually be a part of the mini release? If EA put Ribery out today in the mini release, people would go bananas because this would be an incredible boost to the amount of hype that the Rule Breakers team has. 
uh, right now if there was a Liberty to be added to the game today. So I'm not expecting that. Just kind of, you know, again, putting that out there because there's like maybe this much of a chance, just a tiny chance that it could happen today. Uh, but it really does sound like Liberty is going to be in team number two. Now, what I'll say to end the video off is watch these rule breaker cards. The Christian Ronaldo yesterday going from extinct at two mil to being unextinct. This is a trend that I want you guys to watch. The top tier most popular cards, and especially since EA are updating price ranges fast this year, if there's an extinct card on a promo Friday and you wake up on Saturday, EA has been updating those price ranges. Those cards always get panic sold into 6 p.m. People are fearing the worst with some sort of like pack in the store, but I'm going to be honest, guys, even when lightning rounds come out later this year, Saturdays are almost always days where the market goes low and then it bounces back, right? We saw that with Ronaldo yesterday, 1.56 million coins all the way back to 1.83. I was really not on the game much yesterday, but I saw Ronaldo's price at 6 p.m. And if I had the coins, I would have bought one because I absolutely knew that with how much he was going for being extinct yesterday, so many people wanting to try him and with Alaba being the only SBC content besides those position modifiers, of course, W uh, EA sports, you know, I knew that card was going to bounce back. So that was a dub. Um, I'm not really looking at many of these guys to have crazy rises from Sunday or into Sunday today. You oftentimes don't see that as much. I will say that this at Injeco to me is looking a bit interesting. I don't know how rare he is at the moment, but 170,000 coins. That is a decent bit lower than what he has been in the past couple of days. There's a lot of them here at 170 though. So if I was able to get one of these at like 160, maybe with squad battle rewards. Uh, yes, we do think that squad battle rewards impact the market a slight bit. Maybe this card could go up a little bit after that slight bit of supply this morning on Sunday. We'd have to see, but you know, watch the bids, watch the snipes if you're on during squad battle rewards, and maybe a couple of these rule breakers will rise back up um, a little bit into the day on Sunday. But I'm really curious about the mini release, really curious about Alex Tellez, what his price could be, because it might be a nice day on the game today. Watch out for your other left backs. And Alex Tell us if he looks cracked, watch out for guys like Cancelo, watch out for guys like Teo Hernandez, Ferlin Mendy. They could get hit with a little bit of panic selling if that SBC looks good today. So that's going to be the video for me today, guys. If you did enjoy, smash a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate, the photo count, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.